Hi guys and welcome back to NodeFlow. Today we'll talk about vellum hair constraints. We'll create together a small grass patch and we'll define some properties as plasticity. We'll see how we can control it, how we can modify it and how we can personalize the behavior or our grass patch. So join me Hinodini and let's start. As usual, I will create a geonode. I will name it vellum hair. I will copy my name and save my scene and paste my name in the scene file. Now that my scene is saved, I can go inside and I can start creating my effect. I will start with a line and I want to set some parameters from, for this line. I will change my points to be 13 and my length to be 0 0.15. I will then group the root point so I can define that part to stay still in my simulation. So I'll change my group to points and name it roots. And then here I will just simply write zero. That will give me the first point of the primitive. So here it is. Now that I have my group, I, will, I need a grid to scatter these lines onto. So let's create it. I will only change the size to be one meter by one meter. We can visualize it. I don't need all these divisions. I can go back to two by two and then I can create a scatter node. Plug in the scatter. I want to change my total points to 2000 and then I will change my relax iteration to be five. That will give me a little bit more of a realistic result. Then I want to prune some of these points. So I'll create a delete node and I will go into the last tab here where it says random and I will enable it and change the percentage to 18. In this way, I am deleting some of these points. If I change the entity to two points, we'll see the results. And now we can create a copy to point. And as you can see, we are scattering some lines on the grid. Very simple setup. Although I want to randomize the length of these lines, so I'll create an attribute randomize. And instead of CDE, that's the color, you can see if we plug it in, it will give me a random color. I want to randomize the P scale. That's the overall scale. And as you can see right now, it's ranging from a very small value to a very big value. If you see here, it's ranging from zero to one. We are only interested in these two values, not in these ones, because P scale is a float. So we can also reduce the dimension to one. Here we can change the randomization to be from 0 0.7 to 1.2. Now you can see we have a little bit more interesting profile. Let's order our graph and we can proceed. Now I want to create some constraints. So I will create the volume hair constraints it is the most important part of the tutorial i will then change my density here my mass to set uniform and i will leave it as it is then i will also change my thickness to set uniform and i will make it half so 0 0.005 going down in the pinpoints i want to find my root group that i previously selected as you can see volume is identifying all the roots and this will not be simulated. So that ensures that our vellum hair will not fly around. I will change my pin type to soft and then let's set some properties for the bend and the stretch. I will only change the, the damping ratio to be 0 0.001. And into the stiffness, I want to change it to be 10. So I will write one here and then 10 here because as you can see, this is a multiplier. So right now the result of this one is 10. I will then change this one too to be 0 0.01 and for now it's fine now i want to create a collider for this grass so on this side i will create a grid and i will visualize it and i want it to be 2.8 by 2.8 and i will leave the rest as default i will change its color by creating a color node and setting a dark gray color something like that will work and this is my first collider i want the the grass to collide with the ground so this is my ground for now and then i want to create some spheres that i will animate so we can see a beautiful effect of these spheres passing by. So I want my sphere to be a polygon and I will change the frequency to something like six. I think it's fine. And the scale to 0 0.13. By templating this copy to points, so going here, I will click on my node, press enter in the viewport so I can move my sphere. I will move it here and a little bit more up. Something like that, I think it will work. Then I will animate it. So I will just go on the first frame as I am right now. I will go here and holding the alt key i will click it will create a keyframe for these three parameters and then i want to go to my frame 24 move my sphere over and leave it here and then again confirm it by holding hold and clicking here so now if we press play we can see a simple animation i also wanted to create on the other side so the easiest way to do it is to create a transform node and then as you can see the pivot is on center so i can just rotate it and put it on the other side 
that means that I want the rotation on the y-axis of 90. In that way, we can create our merge, so we can merge our colliders, one, two, and three. And the other thing, as you will see, the animation is basically the same for both of the spheres. I don't like that they quite like they intersect. So I want to offset one animation of your frames. That means that I will create this in node called time shift. I will plug it here. And you see, this is the different, the current frame. So I will change this one to be the current frame minus 20. That means they will be slower of 20 frames. As you can see, the second one will move 20 frames later than the other one. Amazing. Now that we have our simple colliders, let's move them here. And I want to group them and name all of these colliders. While I will also group all of this and name it grass patch. I will save my scene and I will proceed with the creation of the constraints and uh, the solver. So I will plug this one in into the collision geometry, the third input. And now I need a velum solver to simulate all of this. So make sure you are on the first frame and we can connect all of this in. I don't want to template this one anymore. I will change my subsets to be 4 and my constraints iteration to be 200. I will disable self collisions and I can now press play. As you can see, we have some spheres passing by and they are deforming our grass. But if you notice, they are now coming back to almost the same position as they were before. They are not being permanently deformed and that's not how grass is supposed to behave. So that's why we are introducing the concept of plasticity. So we can define it here into the vellum hair. We're interested in the band plasticity. So we can enable it here and we can change these values to define how the plasticity should behave. So let's explain what they are. Uh, the threshold basically defines a value and beyond, beyond this value, the rest position will be altered and will be permanently deformed. So the higher it will be, the harder it will be for the hair to reach this position of deformation. The rate is how quickly the geometry will reach this state of deformation. So once it's being deformed, if it will, it will take a while for it to be deformed completely or it will be instant. To give you an example, a very high rate, it's somehow like a metal that once it's bent, it's very quickly bent and stand, stays into position. While a very low value could be something like a springy bamboo, it takes a while to actually bend into something that won't move anymore. And lastly, the hardening, it defines how will it behave after being bent. Some of these materials can actually be more, uh, can become sort of harder after they have been deformed. Now we can press play to see our first results. As you can see, they're not bending quite as we would expect. So let's go into the volume here and change these three values. I will change my threshold to be five, my rate to be 20, and I will leave the hardening as it is. So let's actually go back and see the difference. Let's press play. And as you can see, it's easier for the grass to bend because we have a lower threshold and we have a higher rate. Well, that's cool and beautiful, but let's create something that's a little bit more interesting than two spheres passing by. So I want to create another collider that's a little bit more interesting, actually. So I'll create a crack. It's one of the test geometry that Houdini comes with. I will disable the shader because for now we don't need it. And as you can see, we have this big guy that will make interact with our grass. So I will leave this node basically as default, apart from disabling the shader. And I want to unpack it. And to make the simulation faster, I want to isolate the fit. They will be the only part of the model computed for collisions. So I will unpack it because it, it's packed. If you can see here by holding middle mouse, we only have 67 points. I cannot be it, as you can see. So unpacking it, you see they actually have all this data inside. Then we can use a blast node to delete some parts. So we want to keep only the parts that will actually interact with the grass. So for now, I will say all of this. I will also hold shift and double click and do the same over here. And then I want to select this one too. And that will be it. Okay, now I can confirm my selection by pressing enter and I will delete non-selected. So now I have my moving body over here and this will be what I will I want to use as a collision. So I will pack it again, just because it's faster to compute later. And then I will use it as a collision geometry. Of course, we want to see a final result. So if we visualize the result like that, it's not great, right? We only see the fit. So because this is the ones that will be simulated as collision, we want to actually see the full model as the output. So we'll create a merge. I will merge the final output of my simulation and my entire model over here. And now if I visualize this, I see the whole model, although the collision, it's only 
this part. So I hope it's clear. To make it a little bit more clear, I will move my colliders here and I will move this new collider up here. I will enclose it in a network box and I will name it Crack Collision. If you don't like the way the uh, strings are between your nodes, you can press Shift S and they will be, I don't know, I think I like them way better than before. And now we can pre visualize what's happening. So let's go back. I want to include in my collisions also my grid. So I will actually create a merge here and I want to include my black geometry and my grid that I have over here. And I will use this one as my collision geometry. So here we have it. Let's actually make some order. I will name this one out collision. And now finally, if we go to the first frame, we need to change the position of our crack because as you can see, it's already on the grass patch. So let's go here. I want to change the Z value to be minus 0.0. 88 that already gives us a nice result and as you can see it's already colliding with the grid it's already going under actually the the proper grid the zero plane so i want to move it up slightly and that way we will have a better behavior with the collisions and yeah just it will work better 0 0.0 12 and for the scale I've, i will scale it to 0 0.68 amazing now we have it scaled correctly and we can press play. What we expect to see now is the plastic behavior as we defined it. As you can see, we can we are still visualizing that thanks to our solver. And we are visualizing the bend plastic flow. As you can see, our character is walking by, is deforming the grass. The grass is staying deformed as it should based on the parameters that we set. There. We are having a nice correct behavior on the grass because we added enough sub steps into the solver. Uh, if you don't have a nice behavior, if you see glitchy stuff, it's because you probably need to add more subsets into the Velum Solver over here. And so we have our simple result, and it's already looking quite nice, although as you can see, these are quite straight, right? Although the effect is technically com completed, let me add just a small pop win over here. I want my velocity to be on the x-axis, but it will be very tiny, very small. So 0 0.2 and the amplitude of 0 0.35 or oh, actually 0 0.3 i think it will work fine and i'll reduce those word size to be 0 0.3 and i don't want it to be very rough i want to be very smooth so i will change it to 0 0.1 the roughness over here now if i go out and i press play it will be slightly slower but as you can see the grass is moving a little bit so while our crack is passing by we can see that very few tiny strands are actually falling by before they are being touched by our crack. So we can do a little bit of a cleanup post simulation to make sure that the simulation looks amazing. So I will just add a simple blast node. I will enclose all of this into something called Vellum Sim. And here I will call this one cleanup. I will make sure to select only primitives and I will click here. So now I can select some of the ones that I think are very weird. So I won't select the ones that are going down because they are breaking the realism of the effect. Some of them, like this one, are starting to fall down. We can select that and keeping going forward, we'll see that also these two are going down. Of course, this is not necessary. Just me being picky and making sure that everything works as I expect it to work. And already like that, I'm quite satisfied. So I will press enter and we can now pre-visualize the whole thing again. I think it looks amazing. I'm actually really happy about the plasticity behavior. You see, we are breaking off the silhouette by adding a little bit of noise. The plasticity is behaving correctly. And also the collisions. We are not having any crazy intersections. As you can see, they are going through as they should. And we are optimizing by using only the legs as collider. And I think the setup is pretty sick. So why don't you give it a try? If you make something that you think is cool, feel free to send it to me. Or if you have any problems recreating the setup, I will be more than happy to help you and to troubleshoot it together. If you haven't, consider subscribing as it's the best way to demonstrate me that you like the content in the you support the channel. And that really motivates me to keep pushing for more videos and higher quality tutorial. But for now, that's it for today. So I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial. We made something quite cool. 
In the next one, we'll talk about Vellum Grain, and I have a surprise for you because I think it will be one of the coolest video of the whole Vellum series. So thank you for sticking by until the end, and I'll see you in the next one.